Hi, I'm Lou Ann Hammond, DrivingTheNation.com. I am with Alex Tebow, the Vice President of Vulog. Yes. What is Vulog? So we uh, are a technology company mm -hmm. that powers new mobility services. So we offer a suite of tools mm -hmm. to enable any company that wants to launch a large-scale mobility project like scooter sharing, car sharing, van sharing, moped sharing, anything in between, uh, to be able to do so uh, by using our end-to-end -end stack. So you basically are a software technology, and anyone that has hardware can utilize your software. You're completely agnostic about whatever it is used on. Absolutely. So you can use third-party hardware to connect a vehicle, mm -hmm. but you can also use our hardware. We design, manufacture our own hardware as well. So we are an end-to-end -end suite. We also offer, of course, a very flexible platform that enables you, once the vehicles are connected to the platform, all you need to do is pair a user with a vehicle that's connected, and you can start doing a number of things with that user. You can charge him a number of things, you can track that user, you're able to do uh, pretty much anything you want to do as part of a sharing service. Now, for someone like me, that means that I can actually rent a car, take it somewhere, maybe at an airport, and then take it to my hotel and leave it at my hotel, and it will be fine. That's exactly what it's made to do. Right, so, so our stack enables a number of applications. One of the applications, and the application that's seen a lot of growth worldwide, has been one-way sharing. Mm -hmm. One-way sharing is you grab the vehicle, whether it's a kick scooter or if it's a car, you grab it somewhere in the city, you drive somewhere else, and you leave it at the spot where you land, essentially, mm -hmm. and y another user can then take it. So it's the same as when you see those little scooters zipping around the city and when the people get there, they leave them there. It's the same thing that you can do with a car. It's the same thing that you could do as a user, bring it to your hotel, leave it in the parking lot, and then some other user could have access to it afterwards. Now, all of this is made possible by some uh, software technology called IMA? Emma, yeah, that's Emma. right. Yeah, Emma, yes. that's right. And that is artificial intelligence. Mobility applied. And yeah. this is your third version of this. Exactly. So, so this is our platform. It's our, the newest version of our platform. What we've essentially done is we've built the platform three times. Mm -hmm. We built a first version. Our, our company is a little bit old in this space. Mm -hmm. We were uh, founded in 2006. You've learned every lesson you can. We've made a lot of mistakes <laughs> along the way, I guess, is the way that we can say it. Uh, but we've grown a lot from it. And uh, so the first version of our platform, we hit a wall. Second version of our platform, uh, there was uh, some scalability. Uh, we wanted to scale it past a certain level, and we needed a new version of our platform. And this is what AMA is now. Uh, AMA has been uh, developed now for over four years, and it's been launched in a number of markets all around the world. Now. Like you've got 30 different customers that use your service. Uh, yeah, so the it's been rolled out in 30 different cities. Mm -hmm. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean 30 different customers because we okay. have more customers in portfolio because there's a lot of upcoming launches in the year as well. Uh, but we forecast that at the end of this year, we're going to land around, we're being 50 to 60 cities around the world. So what I understand is your profitability comes from per car per use, but that's not necessarily the end uh, desire for every one that has the, your system. Right. So our customers charge to their customers based on usage, yes. right? Uh, you have some customers that are going to have a subscription model where it's going to be a baseline revenue that's going to be created. Oh, I have a user who pays 10 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, uh, and I get access to better pricing or even free, cars for free, up mm -hmm. to a certain level, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're talking about uh, the, the users, what the users want out of these types of services is uh, not necessarily for them to be able to, uh, to, I guess, use the car just once, right? Yes. You, they want to be able to rely on that car, right? Mm -hmm. So they want to be able to pay for that vehicle, whether it's using it just one time and paying you know, $7 for your run, but there's also the aspect of the subscription, which we think has been done not necessarily the right way in many instances of the mm -hmm. deployments that we've seen around the U.S., we think that there's value in users paying a number of dollars per month in order to use the service. Now, if you're talking about our profitability for Vulog, what we charge is we charge a price per car per month. Yes. That's what we do uh, from our model, and yes. that is how we make money, essentially. But you also have the city aspect to it. Some of these projects are run by public bodies or public organizations, and what they want to do is they want to declutter 
downtown areas. Right. So they work with cities, but all of our operators work with cities really to get access to curb space where they can put the cars. Uh, and they'll work with cities, but some cities in Europe notably charge such a low amount for curb space that it makes the vehicles very, very uh, interestingly priced because they don't need as an operator to charge much money because their biggest cost center, one of their biggest cost center, which is parking, ends up costing very little. Alex, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.